Have you ever wondered why your new TV or monitor doesn't look as good as it did in the store? The truth is, most devices need some tweaking to achieve the best picture quality and overall the best user experience. While some TVs may come pre-calibrated, the Samsung Q60B requires some extra effort to reach its full potential. Luckily, I've done the homework for you guys and after 6 months of experimenting and testing, I've discovered the ultimate list of tips and tricks to help you achieve the ultimate user experience. So buckle up and get ready to take your viewing experience to the next level. Straight from the get-go, you need to ensure your TV is on the latest software and for few good reasons. First, updating your TV software often fixes bugs and glitches that may be affecting the performance of your TV and this in turn improves the reliability and stability of your TV. Secondly, TV software updates may include new features and functionalities and this ultimately gives access to new features and better user experience. For instance, severe input lag with your remote control or PlayStation console may come about as a result of using an older software version. For example, if you recently purchased a new gaming console or streaming device, you may need to ensure your TV software is up to date so that it can properly communicate with your new device. Now that we've had a look at some of the issues that can arise from using an older software version, here's how to update your TV software on the Samsung Q60B. For good measure you can do this via the internet or through a software download on your USB stick but we'll go with the latter since it's the easiest. Press the home button on your remote control then select menu. From there navigate to settings then all settings. Select support then software update after which you'll choose update now then your TV will begin to search for any available updates. If there are any available updates for your TV, you'll be asked if you'd like to update now or do it later. Select yes to proceed and the new software will begin to download and install on your TV. Once this has been completed, your TV will restart with the new software installed. With everything up and running, let's get into what you guys are most excited about, the picture settings. Even though perception is subjective, out of the box it comes in the standard mode and again, depending on what you perceive to be the best quality, you can either choose dynamic, standard, movie or filmmaker mode. This comparison emphasizes why I prefer movie mode to the others and before doing it, I reset everything to default. Immediately through a movie, I paused and compared the different settings. I first started with standard mode versus movie mode and straight away you can see the difference. In standard mode, the image appears flat with no color depth whereas in movie mode, the contrast and color depth look amazing. To give you guys more perspective, I also compared the filmmaker mode to movie mode and off the bat you'd expect filmmaker mode to do better given that a lot of emphasis is put on color accuracy, contrast, image depth etc etc when doing movies but that's not actually the case. Just like in standard mode, the image appears flat with no color depth and switching to movie mode we can see how it looks a lot better. What do you guys think? Movie mode in itself makes the image pop but to make it better you need to jump into expert settings and adjust the different parameters. Case in point I have my brightness set to 35, contrast set to 50, sharpness set to 10, the color set to 25, tint and GR locked at 0 and for the apply picture setting I've got it on all sources. When it comes to picture clarity settings, I prefer it on auto as this automatically recognizes fast moving objects on the screen and the backlight behind the object is adjusted accordingly. Having it custom means you'll have to adjust the backlight manually and chances are you won't get the backlighting right in most scenarios. In case you didn't know, you can also calibrate picture settings in smart calibration to your heart's content using your phone but there's a catch. You need to either have a Samsung phone that was released January 2019 onwards or an iPhone that supports Face ID. If you'd like a deep dive into that, let me know in the comment section. When it comes to game settings, out of the gates, the Q60P isn't the best due to lack of features like 4K and 120Hz, the variable refresh rates, dynamic black equalizer and whatnot, but in saying that, you can still conjure something up using the game settings it has. Before you start gaming, I'd recommend you enable game mode from the game mode settings tabs in the external device manager to get the lowest input lag, and then use the same settings for SDR or HDR. It's not all dark and gloom on the gaming front. Thanks to its support for low latency interpolation, motion on low frame rate games is well optimized. To enable motion interpolation in game mode, click on game motion plus then adjust the jitter reduction slider to your preference. In case you didn't know, the LED clear motion setting enables the backlight stropping feature. For the PC gamers out there who want bigger screen real estate, the Q60P will automatically detect your PC and enter PC mode to ensure the proper chroma ratio of 4x4x4 four by four by four support is achieved, which is essential for clear text from your PC. You can also achieve this by manually changing the source from the home menu to PC and TV. When it comes to audio and sound, the Q60P in itself produces decent audio quality and if your use case ends at listening to dialogue, it will be just fine, but to get that immersive audio experience, investing in a soundbar would be worth it. 
speaking of sound, but the Q60B does support ARC and ERC technologies, which allow you to pass high quality audio from a connected source through to your sound by or home theater. To use it, you need to set the HDMI ERC mode to auto, and this will automatically detect your TV when you turn it on. You'll also need to set the digital audio output format to pass through to get the most out of it and in case you notice any delay between the action on the screen and the audio, you may need to adjust the digital audio output delay setting which varies depending on the audio device so you'll have to play with the setting to get the audio to match. While on the subject of audio and sound, we might as well touch on the voice assistant. The Q60B does support voice assistants Bixby, Google Assistant and Alexa, but the catch is, you can only use one at a time. I highly recommend either Google Assistant or Alexa because they are compatible with most smart home devices. Moving on to power and energy, with the rising energy costs, there are a few settings that you may wish to enable to help you save some bucks, starting with the brightness optimization feature. This feature automatically adjusts the brightness level based on the ambient light level in your room, so if you watch TV at night, it automatically dims your TV from your daytime viewing setting. If this setting is enabled, you can set a minimum brightness level by adjusting the minimum brightness setting. And if you want to limit the power consumption of your TV, enabling brightness reduction and motion lighting will help you save power. For the last tip, it's pretty simple. Make sure you keep your Samsung Q60B clean and well maintained to ensure optimal performance for years to come. In conclusion, these are my two cents. Don't settle for a basic viewing experience with your Samsung Q60B TV. With these fun and intuitive tips and tricks, you can enhance your entertainment experience to get the most out of your TV from adjusting your picture settings to optimizing your sound preferences, improving your gaming experience, not to mention integration of your audio devices for an immersive audio experience and saving your bucks through the power mode settings. The Samsung Q60B truly hits the sweet spot between affordability and good quality features. Well, there you have it, you're now a pro at getting the most out of your Samsung Q60B. Put those tips into play and you'll enjoy your TV to its fullest potential. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, share and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. For an in-depth look at the Samsung Q60B, check out this video. People of the internet, I'm signing out, see you on the next one.